Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna be solving IV calculations where we're gonna be solving for the completion time, infusion time, and the flow rate. So let's get started. Our first problem says that the healthcare provider ordered 1500 milliliters of fluid to infuse at a rate of 100 milliliters per hour. The IV tubing set has a drop factor of 20 drops per milliliter. You start the infusion at 10.08 a.m., this is military time, on 2.16. So what you need to solve for is what is the flow rate, how many hours it will take to infuse, so our infusion time, and what time the bag of fluids will be done infusing, so our completion time. To help us solve these problems, I'm going to be using dimensional analysis. Now, if you're not familiar with dimensional analysis, you can access these videos up here, which will show you how to set these problems up using that method. So the very first thing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for the flow rate. And flow rate is written in drops per minute. That is our goal where we need to get in our problem. So in order to solve for that, I need to know two things from the problem we just read. I need to know the rate of infusion. So how fast this flu is gonna be infusing, like milliliters per hour. So it tells us that our patient's gonna be getting 100 milliliters of fluid every hour. Then I need to know the drop factor. Where do we get this drop factor from? Well, this is from our IV tubing set. Your IV tubing set will tell you what the drop, the drop factor is. Like for instance, on this bag right here, it tells me it has a drop factor of 10 drops per milliliter. So in order to equal a milliliter of fluid, this tubing set has to deliver 10 drops. So here our problem tells us that the IV tubing set we're using is gonna deliver 20 drops for every milliliter. So we have that information. Now let's plug it in using our dimensional analysis. The very first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and get my converting out of the way because we have to get to drops per minute. Our information from our problem is in hours, right here, milliliters per hour. So I'm gonna start out with that. We know from converting a conversion table that one hour equals 60 minutes. Okay, so now let's plug in our information. So our rate of infusion, we know when we set up dimensional analysis that this unit needs to match that unit so it can cancel out. So one hour is gonna give us 100 milliliters of fluid to our patient. That cancels out hours. Now let's plug in our drop factor. So we know that one milliliter gives us 20 drops of fluid from that IV tubing set. That cancels out milliliters. Now we're just left with drops per minute. That's where we gotta go. So we're ready to solve. So we're gonna multiply everything at the top. When we do that, we get 2,000. We're gonna multiply everything at the bottom. That gives us 60. Then we're going to go ahead and divide. So 2,000 divided by 60 is 33.33 repeating. We're gonna to round to the nearest whole number, round how your program wants you to round. So that rounds to 33 drops per minute. And that is our IV flow rate. Now let's solve for infusion time. So we want our answer to be in hours and minutes. That's our goal. Sometimes this answer will just be in hours because everything divides out nice and evenly, but a lot of times that doesn't happen. You have these leftover minutes, which you have to know because we need a correct completion time. And in order to solve for this, we need to know three things. We need to know the total volume we're gonna infuse, which from our problem, it tells us we're gonna give 1500 milliliters. We need to know our flow rate, which is what we just calculated, and we got 33 drops per minute. And then we need to know the drop factor, which again is 20 drops per ml. So as I'm setting this problem up with a dimensional analysis, I wanna start out with the total volume that needs to be infused to this patient. So this patient needs a total of 1500 mLs, and they're gonna get one dose of this. So since we're doing dimensional analysis, we need the same unit down here, so everything can cancel out here in a moment. Here we're gonna plug in our drop factors, so we know that for every mL they're getting, they're gonna get 20 drops. That cancels out our milliliters. Now, let's go over here, put drops here again. And this is where we're gonna plug in our flow rate. So we know that the patient's gonna get 33 drops every minute. And that cancels out drops. 
So we're in minutes, but I need hours and minutes because if we just calculate this out now, we'll get this really big number and we'll have to figure out how many hours are within those minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little converting. And we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So that is definitely where I wanna be. Our minutes cancels out. Now I'm ready to solve. So when you multiply everything at the top and everything at the bottom, what you're gonna get this top part, you're gonna get 30,000. And this bottom part, you're gonna get 1,980. Then we have to divide that out. When we do that, we get 15.15, repeating, and I'm gonna round to the nearest hundredth. So we get 15.15. So here, this is in hours, okay, this whole number. I need to know the minutes too. So we're gonna take this little extra part that's left over since it's in hours and I'm gonna convert it into minutes. So we're gonna take 0.15, because that's our leftover amount, and that is in hours. And I'm using dimensional analysis again, so we're gonna put hours down here. And we know that one hour equals 60 minutes. And that's where I need to be, is in minutes, because I want that in minutes. So whenever I multiply everything at the top and everything at the bottom, what I'm gonna get is nine minutes. So our answer is 15 hours and nine minutes. That is how long it's going to take for this to infuse. And then lastly, let's solve for a completion time. So this answer is going to be with the time in military time and the date. And to solve for this, we need to know the infusion time, which again, we just calculated it. It's what, 15 hours and nine minutes. And then we need to know the start time when we actually started this bag of fluids. And the problem told us it was at 10.08. And in regular time, that's 10.08 in the morning. And we started this on February 16th. So to calculate this out, it's very easy. It's my favorite part of solving all these because it's very straightforward. We're just gonna add and subtract. So our start time was this. So we're going to put this as our start time. We're gonna add it to this because this is how we have to go forward. So 15 hours and nine minutes. When we add that up, we get 2517. Well, that is not a time because we know there's only 24 hours in a day. So we're gonna subtract that from 2400. And when we subtract that, we get 0, 1, 17 hours. And when we convert that, if you're gonna do it not in military time, just for your own benefit, you know that that's one 17 in the morning, but when you're answering these questions, you want to keep it in military time. And don't forget to change the date because we have now went over to the next day. So you're going to put 217. And be sure you always change that because you don't want to get a problem wrong with just putting the wrong date. The next problem says the healthcare provider ordered two and a half liters of fluid to infuse at a rate of 125 milliliters per hour. The IV tubing set has a drop factor of 15 drops per milliliter. You start the infusion at 22.15 on 4.14. What is the flow rate? How long will it take for it to infuse? So our infusion time. And what time will the bag of fluids be done infusing? So our completion time. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for that IV flow rate. In order to solve for it, we need this information from our problem. And we gotta get to drops per minute. First thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and knock out that converting. So we are going to say that one hour equals 60 minutes. And we know from our problem that for every hour that patient's gonna get 125 milliliters. It cancels out hours. Now we're going to plug in our drop factor. So every milliliter that patient's receiving from the IV tubing set, they're getting 15 drops. And that causes our milliliters to cancel out. And we are in drops per minute, that's where we need to get. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply everything at the top and bottom and divide. So when we multiply everything at the top, we get 1,875. Everything at the bottom, you get 60. And then when we divide that out, we're going to get 31.25. 
We're gonna round to the nearest whole number, which gives us 31 drops per minute, and this is our flow rate. Now let's solve for our infusion time. So this is the information we need to solve for this, and we gotta to get to hours and minutes. Very first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put in the total volume to infuse. So we're going to give two and a half liters. I'm gonna do one dose of that. Now, I'm in liters. I've got to get to milliliters because this is what my drop factor is in. So I'm gonna do a little converting. And we know from the metric table that one liter equals a thousand milliliters. So that is checked off, we're good. Now let's plug in the other stuff in our problem. So next we're gonna plug in this drop factor so we know that one milliliter is equal to 15 drops with our tubing set. So that cancels out milliliters. Now we're going to put in our IV flow rate. So we just solved for that. So we know that the patient's gonna get 31 drops every minute. That cancels out our drops. Now we need to get into hours because it's gonna give us a big number of minutes. So I need some hours so I can then calculate our minutes. So we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. That cancels out minutes. Now, we're where I need to be. So we're going to multiply everything at the top and everything at the bottom and then divide. So when you multiply everything at the top, you are going to get 37,500. And then everything at the bottom, you're going to get 1,860. And when we divide that out, we're going to get 20, 0.16129, so forth. We're gonna to round to the nearest hundredth. So whenever we do that, we get 20.16. So this is in hours. So I know I'm dealing with 20 hours, okay? But I need these little bit of leftover hours into minutes. So we're gonna take a little step further and do some dimensional analysis to figure out how many minutes that actually is. So 0 0.16 hours. We know that one hour equals 60 minutes. And when we multiply that out, both top and bottom and divide, we are going to get, well, when we multiply everything out, we're going to get 9.6, and then you divide, that's what we get. And then we're gonna round that to the nearest whole number, which is gonna give us 10 minutes. So our answer is 20 hours and 10 minutes. That is our infusion time. Now let's solve for the completion time. So in order to solve for this, we needed our infusion time, which is what we just figured out. And we need the actual start time, which came from the problem. And it told us we started it at 22.15, which is 10.15 p.m. on 4.14. So again, we're just gonna add and subtract, super easy. So we started at 22.15, and it needs to, it's gonna take 20 hours and 10 minutes to go in. So we add that up, we get 42.25. We know that's not a time, so we're gonna subtract that from 2400. And when we do that, we get 18, 25 hours. So that is the time it's going to be completed. So just for your knowledge, you know that that's going to be 6.25 p.m. And we have went over into the next day. So it's going to be 18.25 on 4.15. And that's our answer. Okay, so that wraps up this video. If you'd like more practice on solving these type of problems, I have a free quiz on my website that you can access via the link in the description below.